Path to Machine Learning and AI Take Zero. Notice I'm wearing a different shirt, although this should, uh, generally when we shoot our, our content for a specific month where I'm, I look the same. Uh, so interestingly, uh, we only shot two videos uh, yesterday. Today's Wednesday, yesterday was Tuesday. We shot the mindset video. We actually decided yesterday to, to that the core of our, our content for the month is gonna be this path to machine learning and AI. And that's actually a direct result of a post that we, that Zach put on LinkedIn under my account a couple of days ago, uh, where I said, uh, or Zach wrote for me on my behalf, uh, how do you think you can compete with a manufacturer that is doing machine learning and you aren't? I'll wait, that was the post. Um, and today, you know, in a couple of days, it's gotten over 3,100 views and 54 comments. It was a, uh, we, I intentionally waited 24 hours to get a lot of comments built up to see what people's responses were before I chimed in on that message. The core of the communication from the, the community was essentially machine learning and AI is a pipe dream. Machine learning and AI on top of bad data on the edge is a waste of money, it's a waste of capital. Focus on getting good data from the edge first and then do machine learning and AI. Or I've seen too many ML and AI uh, initiatives that were a complete uh, waste of time and, and therefore this is a, it's, it's a wasted investment. So as a, as a result of that, as a result of that post, um, we're gonna go ahead and talk about the path to machine learning and AI. So that is, what is it that manufacturers need to do? What are the steps that they have to take so that they can successfully deploy a machine learning and AI uh, initiative? Now, we haven't prepped for this in any way, shape or form, so it's gonna be a complete stream of consciousness. Uh, I'm just gonna basically whiteboard it. Uh, I haven't prepped it in any, any way. There are no bullet points I'm operating off of, which we generally don't do. But normally for something this complex, I would try and at least wireframe what I was gonna talk about. We haven't done that yet. So I'm gonna actually just kind of walk through some of the comments and, and sketch out uh, my response to some of those comments. So Jim Gavigan actually wrote, he had a bunch of great comments on that post, but the core of Jim's message was, Jim Gavigan, who is a, he's a time series specialist, he specializes in OSI Pi, he's got a consulting firm, I think based in Florida. His firm really specializes in doing uh, OSI Pi uh, time series data um, integrations. But essentially what he said is, is that he would take an industry 3.0 uh, organization that has top quality time series data from the edge over an industry 4.0 uh, company that's doing machine learning and AI but has poor quality data coming from the edge any day. And I don't disagree with them. I mean, what I was saying and what we're saying in our messaging is we're operating under the assumption that any organization that's doing machine learning and AI has an IIoT strategy. So that is a strategy to get their data, all data from the edge into a unified namespace, report by exception. That is we take the edge device and we point it into a namespace so that we're getting we're not just getting the best data, we're getting all data. We're getting all events. We're getting all rising edge and falling edge of every Boolean. We're getting every on-change data point for any analog or real value. We are operating under that assumption that that edge data is good. And here's why. The companies who do not have an IIoT strategy are not going to be in business. We've already said this over and over and over again. If you do not have an IIoT strategy today or within the next 12 to 18 to 36 months. If you, don't, if you haven't deployed an IIoT strategy, that is a plan to get all your data from the edge into a unified namespace so that all of your applications can, produce, can publish and subscribe to that data. Subscribe to the data and then publish back into that namespace. If you don't have a plan to do that, you're not gonna compete. I mean, again, I'm not trying to scare you, I'm just telling you the reality. I don't even have a product to sell to you that most people would try to scare you and then try to sell you you something by scaring you. I don't have a product to sell you. Other people have products to sell you. I don't have the product. I'm telling you this because it's the simple reality that if you don't have an IIoT strategy, if you don't have a mechanism for getting all of your data throughout your entire enterprise into a single unified namespace, if you don't have that strategy in place, you're not going to be in business. Okay. If you have that strategy in place and you deploy it, then we can rest assured that you have the quality data coming from the edge. So we're operating under the assumption that everyone who's doing machine learning and AI has that good data. It was a good point by Jim, but I just wanted to drive home that point 
that we're just ignoring those people, the ones who don't have quality data come from the edge. They're inconsequential to us, okay? Um, there was a bunch of other uh, comments. Um, Amy Loomis uh, made a comment about uh, investing in machine learning, and actually, let me read her what she said. She said, echoing a lot of what was said below, Machine learning on top of bad processes is wasted effort, wasted money, and if you're the one implementing it, unhappy clients. Machine learning or any technology is not a business strategy, it's a tool. I do disagree with the last sentence, it is a business strategy. Machine learning and AI is a business strategy, I'm gonna sketch that here in a second. Essentially what Amy's saying here is the same thing that Bill Gates said years ago, which was if you, you know, automating bad processes just magnifies bad outcomes, right? I and mean, that's essentially what she's saying. Again, we are operating under the assumption that you don't have bad processes. Because if you have bad processes, mother nature is gonna weed you out, right? That's the survival of the fittest piece. So let's talk about AI and machine learning as a strategy. You guys will remember from the videos last month, you know, we have our, our data on the edge. So these, this is all of our, these are our PLCs and our HMIs, our sensors and our instruments, okay? So this is gonna include um, all of our PLCs, this is gonna include uh, anything that's talking heart, anything that's got any intelligence on it. This is, this is the stuff that's running our business, running all of our equipment, okay? And then what we do is we bring this information up to the operator level. So this is generally where we have the MES the manufacturing execution data. We have SCADA here in the middle so that we can control and collect. And then we have our MES data. We use this MES data, think of this MES data as an object in a workflow where the operator is interacting with metrics like availability, quality, performance, OEE, sometimes TEEP, although the TEEP number isn't really for the operator. Um, is interacting with these numbers to determine for them to take, consume that data and then make a decision about how they should modify the process in real time. Generally, it's the performance number. If the machine is running at lower performance than it should be, then the operator generally is gonna do one of two things. They're either gonna speed up the machine or they're gonna adjust the rate at which they should have been running. That is what we call the standard scheduled rate. But the operators, they're gonna consume this information. They're gonna ask a question and then they're gonna make a decision and they're going to, they're gonna adjust a set point that's gonna make their equipment run better. What machine learning does is machine learning consumes this information as well. So we also have our ERP layer, okay? This is gonna have cost information. It's also gonna have schedule information. It's gonna have raw material information. And, and then we have our machine learning here. All, here's what machine learning does. Machine learning um, learns your processes by recognizing patterns. That's basically what it does. AI adjusts your processes based on information it gleans from machine learning, that is indicators coming from the patterns, and then it adapts your processes to these changing variables, okay? It, it, AI basically does what the person is supposed to be doing. So what machine learning does is it consumes information from all these places, it asks a question, and then it makes a decision and it changes a set point or whatever. Or it, to, it, it gives the operator information and the operator decides, yes, I should, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go with the optimal decision or the optimal recommendation that machine learning made. Th this, this is a business strategy. This is an actual business strategy. That is, our strategy, our strategy is to use closed loop processes rather than open loop processes. When you're using operators to make these decisions here, that's open loop. This is a closed loop process, and that is a business strategy. Okay, so, um, and again, the real answer here is much, much more detailed than what I just laid out, but I, I wanna drive home the point that deploying machine learning and AI is, is a business strategy, it is not a tool. Well, that's not true. It is a tool, but it's more than a tool, it's a business strategy, okay? So in the next video, I wanna actually start talking about the path you know, where businesses are today and how they can get to deploying machine learning and AI.